graves shall be yours now, God Woken. Your end will be our beginning! were heroes. What happened to them? And what's this covenant?
looking for something. Something valuable. But what? It's hard not to feel some pride in reptilian engineering. I watched an elf spend hours trying to force his way into a lizard's chest. Eventually, he threw it into the flames. But still it sits there, indestructible. He did not leave empty-handed, unfortunately. I pity the poor salamander that he dragged back to his ghastly home. The spirit does not respond to your presence. The spirit of a dwarf frowns at you, suspicion drawing the lines of his face deep. I don't hear any pickaxes! No shovels! Where are my lazy diggers? We can't be wasting time! The Empress will have me head, and then all of yours! Haven't you seen the excavation site? There's real treasure there. Bones of the beast. The site's close. It has to be. There's more stones to break, more earth to turn. We need to get there. The spirit shimmers faintly, reaching for you with vaporous arms, its voice as weak as the breeze. Red Prince, art thou truly he? Of prophecy foretold, augured in ancient melody. Rav Mudom, Anan Erket, Vetu Duran. It means thou, what thou art. And what thou shalt be. The dreamer knows he passeth by, chased by shadow. To the dreamer I will take thee, for I too dream. In death I dream, Red Prince. Let me guide thee. The spirit comes closer and bids you look into its weary, wearying eyes. A sudden fatigue overwhelms you, and you fall asleep. Once more, you're in the great dark, but you deftly follow your guide in utter silence. The unseen tendrils lash, but do not find you. Soon you spy it, the solitary red eye, the haven in the horror. That is where you are headed. You arrive at the desert camp, dormant beneath an eternal sunset. Brahmos the Wanderer awaits. Your Highness, you have found me. The 
the House of Shadows stirs, sire. Assassins had me cornered, and so I took the last desperate action left open to me. I fled bodily into the dream realm. This is my world now. To Rivalon, I can never return. Not that it matters. It is but a small sacrifice to make in return for the fulfilling of the prophecy that is the Red Prince. It is time we talk about the prophecy, sire. First, let me ask you a question, Your Majesty. A query that involves the very fundamentals of who we are. Who are we? A falsehood. We are descendants of a race older than the gods. Here is the truth, Red Prince. We were dragons once. All of us. All lizards are descendants of dragons. Great red dragons. You anticipate me most accurately, Your Highness. The prophecy, the secret that the House of Dreams has safeguarded for countless millennia, says that when the Red Prince and the Red Princess unite, their children will be dragons, and through their union all lizards will be dragons again. Throughout history, the House of Shadows has spilled the blood of thousands of dreamers to prevent your birth and your union. But we are on the cusp of denying them their long-sought victory. You must go to her, Red Prince. She is waiting for you. Yes, she is close by indeed. There is a camp to the north. It's where I was headed before the House of Shadows caught up with me. She knows the House of Dreams is the ally of dragons. She's aware we've been trying to unite you against all the odds. So go to her, for she awaits you with ravenous patience. No one knows the motives of our enemy. Why they seek to keep us shackled to the ground when we could soar and scorch. They look like lizards, but they think like demons. Though I've been battling them tooth and nail all my life, I cannot say who their leader is, if there even is such a creature, and of what race it is. But in the end, that is of no consequence. Unite with the Red Princess, and your children will breathe the fires of a second sun that will banish all shadow forever. You ask me, sire, about a time when the Seven still strode this world, in the finger of a god would trace lazily along the land and leave in its wake a river. Who can tell what happened when the stars above this paradise darkened in the void and froze even the fire of dragons? All I know is that ever since the first lizards awoke, cold upon rock and sand, some of them dreamt and in dreams remembered what they were and could be again. Her name is Sadha, princess of the House of Law. Just like you, she was raised within walls, protected against the world. But unlike you, born within the boastful house of war, her existence was kept a secret. It was I who pushed for secrecy, for as I held you both in my arms mere days after your birth, I knew the moment had come. As I knew, the shadows would close in. You've known each other all your lives through dreams. I watched. You've longed for one another in loneliness. I saw two flames you were, with a long black shadow cast in between. But soon, no more in between at all. As you wish, my prince. A nonchalant snap of the fingers, and just like that, you're back in the land of the living.
Majesty. Thou returnest from the nighttime realm, laden with the promise of prophecy. I, lost soul, know my duty is at an end. Fare thee well, all father. Blessed be. Rav Mudom, Charal Evdekius Racht, Ve Tu Doran. Too heavy. A sinner I, and who is not? The sinner lies that they sin not. A sinner lies. And yet the boneyard's full of sinners who got their prayers, while I did not. Come on, mistress. Hear me. Heed me. You've always had a glint in your eye for old Zimsky. Don't abandon me now. Zimski mutters to himself as he traces sigils in the dirt. He spies you, and a shrewd look brightens his eyes. He stretches out a hand, showing you a solitary coin on his palm. Heads or tails? So yourself? Must be nice to be born with Lady Luck's golden spoon in your mouth. Enjoy it while you can. All my life I served her, and see how it ends? In the dirt, just the same as everybody else. Turning from you, he crouches back to the dirt. He resumes tracing esoteric sigils, his fingertips swirling through the graveyard clay. Uh, signs, the caller. Oh, Lady Luck always came when I called. For thirty years we roamed Riverlong together. She was my faithful mistress, from card game to wager to grift. She was the life of me. Yet she wants no dead man. Now I cannot influence even a coin toss. But you breathe. I'll wager you more use for my gifts than I do. Here, tell me what you truly value. If my lady sees fit, I'll give you what I truly value in return. Good enough. He smiles a foxy smile as he stabs claw-like fingers at your chest. He begins to trace sigils on your flesh. Though you cannot feel his fingers upon your skin, something inside you shifts. You feel a coldness, and a sick longing seeps into your heart. He croons incantations as he works, and his voice is like the throwing of a thousand dice inside your brain. Your body is suddenly filled with lust for coin, and craving for more. Ah, uh, now you feel her touch. Now Lady Luck sings in your blood as she once did in mine. Now, I feel nothing.
locked fast. Maybe it's connected to some other mechanism. What did that do? All this wealth has just been going to waste. Unlike so many other spirits, this one is hardly silent. She clicks and squawks the moment you approach her, like a cornered crow facing down a hungry owl. the new servant then. My, my. You look like my old handbag for dipped in cherry wine. You brought my tea, have you? The spirit takes the invisible cup from you and takes a sip of non-existent liquid. I've tasted better brews, but from the look of you, the refreshments won't be improving. She waits a moment. You expecting a tip? Here's one. Exfoliate. That old thing, it was passed to me by my father, Johannius. And my father's father, Johannius. And my father's 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 father, Johannius. Don't know what happened to the one in the middle. Don't rightfully know what it's supposed to do. Johannius, the um teens brought it back from Blood Moon Island. I thought it might be good for stirring stew, but the cook gave it back. Said it made her feel funny. Whatever that... Mama can't when that good The spirit stands there smiling, as if she hadn't just uttered the words of demons. Luckily, you understood them. Anathema seeks blood. What just happened? You mean my display of proper posture and etiquette? The benefits of charm school, I don't expect you'd qualify. Hurry back. The eyebrows still need plucking. Too heavy. You feel the unusual object's vast energy before your hand even touches its smooth surface. Upon contact, the semi-transparent artifact shivers and speaks. You know this language. It is an archaic tongue spoken only by demons for untold eons. When as one, I am slayer of sin and the bane of the living. Restore my twin. Make me whole. In archive of old, the blade resides, an isle of blood, where demons abide. The object speaks once more, and you consider your fortune in understanding its demonic monologue. I'm demon true, taken to Isle of Vaults, exorcised from host most dear. The priest, Surrey by name. Confined my soul to blade of glass and bone, then split in twain when madness boiled his blood. Anathema, I'm called, but only halves before you. In archives rest the blade. The path is marked. Now on to Isle Embark. The heirloom is silent once more. 
The oblong object is crystal clear and unmarked by marks or chips. It rests snugly in your palm, as if meant to be gripped with a resolute hand. The object repeats its cryptic remarks. A vast continent full of people. What the hell is your witch rat?
trying to escape. The dog spirit rolls his head around, gawking at the ground and sky as if he's never seen them before, then locks his eyes on yours. He snarls unconvincingly. for the demon blade. Indeed, the masses tremble at my might. We will retrieve anathema. Our enemies will bow before the demon blade. He moves to lick his haunches and seems taken aback by his own translucence. Once a demon, now a weapon. We heard its call and slayed our allies in its name. It is near. With it, we will slay living and undead alike. There will be no mercy. The canine spirit lifts his head to howl, but can barely manage a whimper. He tucks his tail between his legs, shocked at his own impotence. My sun-baked friend. Any luck in old lady Surrey's tomb?
He places his hand on the artifact, and it drones in the demonic tongue. When, as one, I am slayer of sin and the bane of the living, restore my twin, make me whole. The object continues. In archive of old, the blade resides, an isle of blood where demons abide. It's true, then. Anathema, within reach. Tell me, is this all there was? There weren't any other curios in there? But of course. I consider it my scholarly duty to know what I can of them. Surely you of all people understand the quest for knowledge. He breathes a long, lugubrious sigh. <sighs> it's time I leveled with you. This is the hand grip of the fabled anathema. A sword capable of annihilating anyone. Even a divine. Imagine it. Holding in your hand a force that could wipe away sun and shadow. A sword of life and death, miracle and sin. A sword of... atonement. I can restore Anathema to working condition, but this is only half of it. We still need the blade. How fortunate that the hilt has already told us where to find it. Blood Moon Island. Fascinating. And it told you exactly where to find it. Histories are wildly incomplete. But now I have a better picture of how Anathema came to be. An exorcised demon living in a sword of glass. The hilt was brought here by one of the many Surreys. Not surprised. None of them sound too bright. I can't imagine having even half a demonic sword around was very healthy for that feeble-minded family. They probably wince whenever a black cat came around. Well, well, well. You've got spirit to go with those smarts. Blood Moon Island awaits, my friend. It's a bit of a jaunt, but this gives me time to prepare my workspace. We'll catch up in the Lady Vengeance, yes? Tarquin doesn't wait for an answer. His attentions are already turned elsewhere. Ancestor tree. Pure grace in an undeserving world. The spirit of the tree may have much to say. The spirit ignores your presence, busy as it is resisting the pull of another. The ancestor tree, trying to take its source. All you feel is the spirit's resistance and its anger directed at the mother tree that has betrayed it. The spirit ignores your presence, busy as it is resisting the pull of another, the ancestor tree, trying to take its source. All you feel is its resistance and its hate for the rebellious scion. The spirit ignores your presence, busy as it is. The spirit ignores your presence. The roots of a great ancestor tree reach from deep underground to the surface above and beyond, but this tree feels tainted. You are a scion of the elves. The mother tree demands your blood. You do not have a choice. She has a plan, and you must serve her with your death. You heed your mother's wishes and take root. But then you hear a voice, 
a friendly whisper from beyond. The voice knows you. He understands you. He loves you. He offers you your freedom and asks but one small service in return. Grateful, you accept. In an instant, you are an elf once more, walking in the world. But your new friend begins to make demands. Small services, then larger and more often. They cause you pain. At last, he bids you guard your tree. He expects you shall have guests. You shall kill the Godwoken when they come. Then you shall be free. The thought occurs. The sign replaced one bad deal with another. Everyone's in charge of their own fate. Sounds to me like this incent has down the drain. Spare me this elven strife. I care not. Desperation leads to stupidity. Among the stupid, anyway. The plinth of the statue bears... You cringe at the sound of stone grating against stone. The sculpture looks impossibly heavy, yet turns with little effort. The statue rotates with little resistance. The statue rotates with little res... The headless statue looms over you. Its plinth bears the same rotation scratches as its counterpart. The statue doesn't move, no matter how much force you apply. The spirit does not talk to you, though the pet.
more not for Crispin, a simpleton's idea of a clever man and a poor man's idea of a rich one. Descended from the hall to deliver the dead to Ralik, they say. What's this? I found something. Could have done this to work. A man paces back and forth, puffing anxiously on a pipe. His face is creased with tiredness. The faint coppery hue of dried blood stains his hands. He sees you. If you're looking for healing or the like, then you'd best look elsewhere. My... my plate is full for now. The man chomps on the bit of his pipe, generating a small cloud of nervous smoke. Finally, he plucks it from his mouth and clears his throat. I came by a new patient, a young woman, very troubled. I'll do what I can for her, but I'll need to concentrate. And that means... He gestures with his pipe for you to leave. Oh, fine. You can help. Take this key and go to the cellar. I'll join you there. Just... Be careful. It's clear she's a powerful sorcerer, but also whatever she was subjected to has warped her in body and mind. I have her locked up for good reason. Got to come up with something. Can't keep her locked up forever.
Did you expect a needle? Magisters would probably have her killed. <laughs> 